Jack, would you um, just kind of talk to us about your history as an artist, how you began, and the medium you've worked in? Um, I think one is fated, uh, probably very early, on, on, in, in these, in these uh, directions. And uh, I remember looking at pictures as a, as a, a kid. I had a cousin that, that painted lavish watercolors, and uh, a cousin, and uh, was generous with his, his time. And uh, lived in Youngstown, uh, and had an extraordinary teacher that, that in, in junior high uh, took interest. She, she singled out a number of students that, that seemed to be more sort of hooked on this and, and made sure we got uh, uh, special uh, guidance and, uh, uh, and, and that was very helpful. Uh, Youngstown also had, uh, I learned much later, the, the, the first uh, museum uh, of American art in, 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 in the country. And it had a collection of fabulous things. Uh, uh, Winslow Homer, John Singer Sargent, Blakelock, uh, things of that sort. So you could take a bus and, and, and wander through that, and, and it was stimulating. And Life Magazine at that time was the Bible. Of, <laughs> they, they had these these issues with, with uh, uh, artists of indelible uh, <laughs> imprint on, on one. Uh, those were all, I think, contributions. And, uh, uh, and, and the same thing uh, with a teacher happened in, in California. We moved out in uh, 1946. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, there was Janet Benton Payne, who took some paintings to Miller Cheats and, and uh, was one of the sort of active and, and sort of marvelous uh, uh, boosters of, of art. He invited me to take classes at Scripps College uh, without the bothersome of, of enrolling. <laughs> and, uh, and so I had that. And, uh, and at that time, uh, Henry McPhee, all of things, was, was at, at Scripps, and Miller Sheets, and Phil Dyke, and these people who were, who were uh, uh, wonderful figures in, in, uh, uh, in, in, in California. Uh, and um, th this, this infection, <laughs> stayed. You have, you asked about sculpture and and the and the Rome Prize, and, and I, mm -hmm. I said that uh, in those days sculpture was something artists said that that, that painters said they were looking at painting and backed into the, in the sculpture. So so uh, in, in in Rome I had the, I got the Rome Prize in painting and. Uh, uh, somehow found clay in the studio at the American Academy. Uh, Carl Millis had been there earlier. He was a Swedish sculptor, a great presence. And this clay was sort of was tempting, and <laughs> one thing led to another. Uh, a little lab, and, and, uh, and I put it aside and, and went on painting, and then there, another lamb kind of appeared. and, and uh, Rome uh, was had the it was confined within the Aurelian walls very compactly. And outside, in uh, in these pastures, were all these uh, animals, you know, herds of sheep and, and, and goats, and uh, and they, you know, they were the temptation uh, into sculpture and and. And those things multiplied uh, until I was doing more sculpture than painting, and or, or, or at least as much. 
and uh, uh, sculpture is addictive, as, as some sculptors will tell you. And uh, once you're, you know, hooked, it's hard to let go. So. Um, and that led to the sculpture you have here in Hotel Texas, because it is a ghost. Right, it was. Well, in in uh, in the Mediterranean, the, the, the uh, there is something, uh, you know, the Paschal feast, the goat and lamb are, are killed for uh, the, the, the Paschal feast, and I think the origins were probably uh, religious, but now they they they, they seem you know, to have lost their uh, sort of somber. Uh, aspects and you saw these uh, you know, you know, flayed carcasses in in, uh, in the in the in the markets and also the, the, the animals tethered to for, for, for slaughter. So those things sort of came together. I, I'd gone through uh, North Africa and Greece from, uh, and uh, Yugoslavia on, on one trip then, and, and, and this thing seemed to be prevalent. So, uh, so that I made these these, these things, and uh, the steak is is an invention uh, be, because uh, with all the sort of convolutions of, of, of those goats, the the, the steak uh, poses, I, I thought, a threat to the vulnerability of the, the goat's stomach, uh, and. Uh, and that is more dramatic than if it, it, if the animal were dead, and uh, and it also gives a, sort of a, a, a pillar, something like the edge of a canvas that one can design against. So this steak uh, was uh, uh, helpful in in, in, in that uh, in that sense, and, uh, and and this is one of the earliest. Uh, the the size that they were in their first incarnations were uh, not nearly life size. Something like a fox terrier or a dachshund, maybe, and uh, and they got uh, they got bigger, and uh, and 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 then one stray. Sort of one of them that were, were tiny, done in wax, and and wax is a very you know flexible thing. You can you can uh, uh, you can scrape it off of a, a piece of marble and get a wad of it and form it very quickly. Uh, drop it in a, in a bucket of cold water, take it off, and see if there is a metamorphosis or a goat's body in it, <laughs> and. Uh, and go from there. So, uh, and so they they develop as uh, the very small ones in wax, the, the medium-sized pieces in clay, then transfer into a, a plaster, and, and then uh, later ones uh, were directly in plaster. Some of them, which is a, a miraculous material. It. Uh, if, if it didn't exist, you would dream about it as a sculpture, you know, because it's, at one point, it's liquid and, and powder, and then it's like yogurt, and then it gets a little, and finally it's hard like stone, so you have all these states to, to work in, and, uh, and that, that, that uh, and wax goes, they, they went straight into the uh, foundry, you know, the wax, the uh, lost wax uh, uh, process. Would you mind speaking to um, how you learned that you were involved in this exhibition um, and how you did not know that your work had been involved in the 1963 installation? Well, we, we, were, we were living in Rome at that time. And, and it was, uh, we were there from 1954 till the early 70s. So this happened uh, it, it, uh, while there. Uh, there, there were, we learned from friends, we got calls and made calls when the news happened. And, and uh, of 
course, you remember, we, we were riveted by it. And uh, uh, it was not just uh, Americans, I think. Uh, Certainly Italians felt it. And, uh, oh, but I'm trying to, the, the, just the communications weren't that, that, uh, that, that secure at that time. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, as, as we, we said, I, I think that probably, you know, the, the devastation, there, there was no need to prolong <laughs> the, the contact about it. So, but um, I, I'm, I'm happy to be part of this at this point, I'm sure. And, uh, and what, what were your feelings when you found out that your work had been on display in President Kennedy's suite? Flattered, extremely flattered to be in that company. Well, uh, I knew of the the vitality of the, of the support of the arts that, that Dallas has always had, and, and Houston, uh, Fort Worth, I should say. So uh, that, that part was no surprise, you know, that it would, you know, it, it could happen. Uh, um, it, it took a while to, to absorb that, and, and, and I'm, I'm very glad we came. And just to find uh, all this sort of uh, the enthusiasm and the kindliness and, and the respect that uh, all this means. It, it, it's uh, uh, artist's dream <laughs> of recognition and all those things, of course. Uh, we, we, uh, we like to believe and to, to uh, sort so, so, of support the theory that it is all just for art and in, in the confines of the studio, but all, all those other things are, are, um, are into play and, and uh, they, 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 they certainly are. And you had mentioned earlier um, what a unique opportunity this was and a unique um, experience for this type of um, exhibition. Would you mind speaking to that? Well, the the cataclysm of the, this, this, the assassination, with with the art show and the and the and the goodwill and the graciousness of the of the, the people in in, in uh, Dallas, and the, the the fact that the the collectors and the museum uh, here w w did not give these things as sugary or gracious or decorative. They, 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 they selected these works by their content. And, uh, and that shows forth. And uh, if it were just, you know, kind of the pretty faces, then you would, you would not like that company. But, but uh, 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 I, I think these are artists that are trying to do you know, things of substance, and did. They were on a kind of vanguard of, of development uh, uh, and, uh, uh, of course, it's great to be in that company. Uh, uh, I had a, uh, uh, the pleasure of meeting Henry Moore at one time and uh, uh, knew uh, a lot of these pieces by you know, by reproduction and, and uh, coming across them in museums and things. So, so to see the real thing is always a, a, a treat. And your piece was um, displayed right next to Henry Moore in this Indeed, week. indeed. Uh, I told Olivia that, that I had an exhibition in Rome uh, years ago and, and found uh, a note from Moore uh, with, with a nice Congratulations, and that was, that was nice. And we'd met him a couple of times. He, he, he came to the American Academy. He was a favorite with, with the director there. Uh, always modest. And uh, actually uh, invited us to, to come to Mooch Haddon 
but we were too shy to do that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, uh, that was a pleasure.